2023 marked a year of economic growth and development challenges for one of the state's most vital economic engines, the South Carolina Ports Authority. That's right, and today Ports Authority CEO Barbara Melvin delivered her annual State of the Port Address, this one coming after her first full year on the job. News News' Riley Benson sat down with Barbara Melvin last week for an exclusive interview ahead of her address. Some of the highlights from this year's State of the Ports Address include a rise in the port's economic impact on South Carolina, up more than $20 million from 2022, $63.5 billion. 2023 also saw a slight drop in the amount of cargo flowing through one of the country's largest ports. Regardless, CEO Barbara Melvin says after more than a year on the job, the Ports Authority remains on a strong trajectory headed into 2024. You know, every first year has opportunities and challenges. You know, you you think you know everything about the business. This year's State of the Port Address shows economic growth to the tune of nearly $87 billion. But the amount of cargo handled by the port down 10 percent. Melvin says the decrease allowed the port to catch its breath. Um, we're watching what consumer spending is doing and we're seeing it level off kind of pre-pandemic. Um, and so I think as we all reset what we think about as volume and spending um, across the globe, that's what is easily reflected in port volumes. For Melvin and the port, which either directly or indirectly supports one in nine jobs in South Carolina, the numbers matter. Melvin says recent success is vital, but future expansion has to be viewed through a long-term plan. Our infrastructure is a long cycle. Um, we can't let two and three years throw us off of a strategic plan that allows us to grow this capacity. Some expansion is coming, including a harbor barge system between the Wando and Leatherman terminals and the North Charleston Navy Base Intermodal, both designed to ease congestion and both set for a 2025 opening. It's coming out of the ground both from the terminal aspect as well as building supports. Um, the buildings that will support the facility and then the Cosgrove McMillan overpass, which will allow the trains to not interrupt um, passenger cars as they're entering the, the facility. Other projects like the Union Pier redevelopment have faced pushback. And the community clearly knows what they don't want and they conveyed that to us. And I think we're now in that process of defining what we do want as a community and we're working together to do that. So I really don't see the process as obstacles. And as the calendar turns on a new year, Melvin says the ports will focus on reaching more South Carolinians, expanding and celebrating both inland and marine ports and closely watching consumer trends in order to sustain a competitive edge. So workforce, building adequate infrastructure, to handle all of that um, and, you know, really making sure that we're positioning ourselves as a new gateway for the United States. We have a more in-depth breakdown of the numbers and information from Melvin's State of the Port address today on our website. That's countonto.com. In studio, I'm Riley Benson.